Assalamu alaikum alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters, can we first start off with the Surah Fatiha for our oppressed brothers and sisters around the world? I'd like to thank all of you for coming here today and joining us on this beautiful gathering. It's amazing when we have such an amazing turnout. Honestly, it really, it really throws me back. I'm here to talk about Medina Institute today, and we want to thank a couple of people before even starting. We want to th thank our dear respected chair for coming and joining us here today, and we want to thank Kiel Isop for actually hosting us here today and working with us very well and thoroughly as well. The surah that was just read was Surah Maryam, and subhanAllah, an amazing surah. We just did a tafsir course over the weekend in Aston University, and I believe I, I did see some of you who attended, and I'm sure you're aware how amazing that event was. Now, Medina Institute's an organization which is bringing revolutionary teaching to, to the UK. We're an institution which is based all around the world. We're in South Africa, we're in Canada. We've got a little motto, and some of the volunteers, they go with it, Medina Institute, uh, coming, to a, coming to a town near you. And, and pretty much that's us. We're, we're literally bringing our education, the traditional Islamic education, in a way which us students are used to, the, the lecture-based learning, where we have a pen and paper in front of us, because some of us find it hard to be sitting on the ground and learning as well. Thus, we have today here just, just a little taster of what Medina Institute has to offer. I don't want to take too much of your time, honestly, because we have very little time to speak, and I want our chef to speak as much as possible. So I hope you all have an amazing, an amazing time at this event, and inshallah, we'll hope to see you soon in some more of our events. Assalamualaikum. Um, I'm just going to introduce the Sheikh. Uh, not that he can't introduce himself, just because I've been told to. So Sheikh Mohammed actively teaches and participates in conferences worldwide, and his lectures are highly academic yet spiritual filled with references to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. His aim is to draw people close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which will help rebuild the individual, families, communities, societies, and the universe. This is the need of our time. His education, his education began under the tutelage of his honorable father, Shaykh Yahya, under whom he started memorizing the Qur'an and acquiring knowledge of Islamic disciplines, including Aqidah, Fiqh, Hadith and Islam. <coughs> Sheikh Mohammed continued pursuing Islamic knowledge from the many great scholars who resided in Mecca, Medina, Morocco, Egypt, and Syria, and went on to study at Al Azhar University at the faculty of Sulubdin, specializing in Hadith. He holds a doctorate, doctorate degree in medicine and a bachelor's degree in microbiology from the US. Sheikh Mohammed is keen to revive the prophetic message of love, mercy, moderation tolerance and sincere care of humanity through education with a back to basics methodology. Sheikh Mohammed bin Yahya al Husseini and Ninawi descend from a Syrian scholarly family whose lineage goes back to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, through Imam Hussein bin Ali. Radiallahu anhu. So thank you for coming again and inshallah without further ado I'd like to let the Sheikh take So let me just thank you all for coming anyway on a, on a is it a Monday? Sorry, I've been traveling. And you know, when you go across the Atlantic, day becomes night, night becomes day, and then everything is just really So thank you all for coming out on a Monday uh, for answering the call. Uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate your time, uh, you being here. And it's nice to be at, I think this is our second time. It's nice to be at Kiel. Uh, uh, university is small, but a pretty campus. I, I like to put it that way. But the best is the companionship. So may Allah bless you for coming. And I'd like to remind myself and you uh, to make an intention that we gather here today 
just to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, this way and with the intention of both of us seeking knowledge inshallah through the book and the sunnah this way inshallah that Allah rewards us and grants us the reward of those who seek knowledge as the hadith that the Nabi Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam mentioned hadith al-sahih you all know it ma'ayt al-fi muslim wa tirmidhi wa ghayrihi bi isnad al-sahih يقول فيه صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله من سلك طريقا يمتنس فيه علما whoever seeks a way to acquire knowledge Allah grants a way in return for to Jannah or makes it a way to go to Jannah so this is really the whole point that we're here together today and inshallah Allah makes it that way and grants us, grants us the reward for that other than that disregard whatever most of the brother Allah bless him he, he said all these fancy words that I'm not worthy of for sure the first few lines I thought that I could really solve the whole problems of the world by that, you know. <laughs> and the universe actually, since the universe was mentioned. So, you know, Allah forgive our, it's not his fault obviously, I don't think he wrote it, but whoever wrote it that was ignorant on their side, just simply because we're human beings and we don't have any magic pills. Yes. Alright? And knowledge is, is to be humble. Knowledge is not to go about big names. And I told if it's, so if it's some of my students who did that, please point them out to me. Okay. <laughs> because it's it's nice for us not to fly all the time. It's nice to walk. Right? It's nice to fly every time. We, we've been flying throughout history. I mean, we live in history because we don't want to face reality. But it's not nice to always bring history into reality. There, therefore, because if you do that, you're not gonna live. You're not gonna learn from your history, and you're never gonna learn from your presence and you're going to miss out on planning for the future because you're delusional then. Knowledge makes people humble, doesn't make them arrogant. And titles and descriptions never make people knowledgeable. They're never a reflection of who you are or what your knowledge is. Besides, knowledge is not really that important anyway. Knowledge is only important if it's coupled with application. <laughs> Iblis had knowledge, didn't have application. And therefore, the Quran came, never stops at Alladina Aman. But always, like the brother was mentioned, was reciting, Alladina Aman wa? Amiru. There has to be Aman. It's just not the word. So, you know, again, I know all of you are scholars in your field. Allah bless you for all that, and that's great. And be, being scholars, obviously, in your field means you're truthful to your field. And therefore, being truthful to ourselves. So they want me to talk about the heart, I guess. And the problems of the heart and all that stuff. <clears throat> Allah. That's actually, that, actually, you know what, we can connect this with this. And here's the hadith that Imam Muslim and others narrated, and you all know the hadith where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَجْسَادِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ And this hadith is beautiful, in which the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah does not look at your suwar. <coughs> suwar means how you look or how you were made to look. إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَجْسَادِكُمْ Does not look at your bodies, does not look at your shapes, does not look at how you look. Does not look at your pictures. وَلَا كَيْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ But he looks at two things. Your hearts, your deeds. And then the narration in the Muslim where the Nabi says, التَّقْوَ هَاهُنَا Three times he says, Taqwa is in the heart, taqwa is in the heart, taqwa is in the heart. Three things. So here we go. And Mustafa is telling us that Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa la ila ajisadikum. Allah does not look at your bodies. And does not look at your, at what you look like or how many titles you have before or after or in the middle of your name. All these things make no difference. What does he look at? Your heart. And then your amal. Notice, why does he say here heart and then deed? 
Well, remember this again, the surah that was just recited, and surah al-asr, all of you know, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wal-asr, inna al-insana lafi khusrin illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu salihat. Al-Iman is, where is the essence of Iman? Is in the heart. The essence of Iman starts in the heart. Ma'rifatun bil qalb, the narration goes to say. Right? So it's ma'rifah in the heart. So there you go. So Allah does not look at you, how you look and at your bodies, but look at your heart and your deed. Because that's looking at the Iman and the Amal. Heart is where the Iman is, and the Amal, the deed, is what confirms the heart. The belief of the heart. The heart is a problem. Any of you study medicine or pre-medicine here again? Yeah? How far? Pre med? Third year med? So you're already in clinical sciences? So you're taking cardio? Alright, so those of you who are taking the cardiovascular system. It's the cardiovascular system, right? It's not just the heart. Because you got the vessels, you got the heart, and then you got electricity in there. There's the intrinsic conduction system of the heart, right? You all know that. Because the heart has an automaticity and rhythmicity within itself. So you, if you were to sever the heart from any and everything, it still beats. It should at least, theoretically speaking. That's why you can plant it without anything. Just take from one planet and the other. Automaticity and rhythmicity, and that's because it's got an, an, an intrinsic conduction system, right? The SA node that fires to the AV with a slight delay, 0.2, and then it goes to the bundle branches, right and left, right? 100 to 60 per minute, then 40 to 60, and then less than 40. And Allah will help you if there's no coordination. If there's no coordination in the intrinsic system of the heart, the heart doesn't beat, it goes into flutter becomes ineffective, person dies. Because there's no coordination. There's no structure. This one is beating on its own. This is beating on its own. The ventricles are beating along. The atria are beating along. It doesn't work. But this cardiovascular system or this heart that we're supposed to be talking about is not necessarily just the muscle. Now, medicine can only tell you that the heart is actually a muscle. In fact, now they're changing their views to say, well, it's not just a muscle, it's also an endocrine gland. An endocrine gland means it's a gland that secretes hormones, right? Versus exocrine. So one has canal, one does not have canals, one dumps immediately in the blood, one, one goes through. Endocrine gland means secretes hormones, because their heart actually does secrete a hormone. A and B, atric natriuretic peptide, right? What does it do? Flushes down sodium. means flushes down water as well. So it doesn't only pump. We always thought, for the longest time, we thought the heart, all it does is just pumps blood to the body. That's how, and blood, obviously, you all know that blood carries oxygen and nutrients to your cells, so that's how it goes. It turns out that the blood, that the heart doesn't only do just pump. It's not just a pump. It actually also secretes hormones. When you're secreting hormone, it means that you're sensing the whole situation in the body, and based on that, you secrete it when it's appropriate. Only Allah knows what we're going to discover tomorrow. Right? I always say there's so many things in medicine where people say, the most experts of medicine, but that's not just in medicine. You all know this. The more you know, the more you realize how much you don't know. And the less you know, the more you think you know everything. That's really how it is. Anywhere. And therefore, right in medicine, they say it's iatrogenic ideology. The etiology is iatrogenic. Iatrogenic means nothing. It means we don't know what it really is. So we're just going to call it one big fancy name that you people, laymen, don't know what it means. And you think it's really big. We don't know. And there are many things we don't know. But we do know Al Quran divides the heart, now not the cardiovascular pump or the endocrine, the heart has an endocrine gland, but the heart, as the, as the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa mentions in hadith also, which is sahih, sahihin, where he says, Allah wa inna fil jasadi mudra, idha salahat, 
in the body there is a, there's something. If it is good, then the whole body is good. If it is bad, the whole body is bad. What is it, Ya Rasulullah? Al-Qalb, the heart. Now, you know, some people will go to say, it's not necessarily the cardiovascular one, it's just the spiritual heart, it's the soul. I don't, I just say the heart, because the Prophet Sallallahu says the heart. Now, what is that meant? Is it meant this heart that we will discover eventually other things that we don't yet know? Only Allah knows. But the point you all know. And that's why, you all know about Luqman Hakim, right? Right. They say Luqman was a black man, supposedly. I'll just tell you the story. I don't tell stories, I'll tell you the story. So he's a black man. He was supposedly enslaved. And this has no sanad, huh? Take it or leave it. It's one of these things. Well, you don't have to take it. So uh, his slave master supposedly told him, uh, upon slaughtering, offering sacrifices, sheep, says, go get me the most pure things in the human being. So he went, he offered a sacrifice, a sacrificial lamb, and he got him the heart and the tongue. He says, here's, the heart and the tongue are the most, the purest thing that a human being can have. He says, okay, go get me now the most vile, filthiest thing in the human being. He went, he offered a sacrificial lamb, he brought them the heart and the tongue again. He says, what's going on here? He says, this is really it. It's the heart and the tongue. If they're good, everything's good. If they're vile and, and evil, everything's evil. There's no need to look any, any further. It's done. And in the tongue, you all know hadith that's authentic. Hadith Mu'adh, radiallahu anhu, where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells him, Mu'adh tells, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells him, tells Mu'adh to take, to make sure what he's saying, because what you say is important, right? The mere words are very important. You know, oftentimes we don't really think about the words. Right? We just say things. But Mu'adh radiallahu anhu was trying, he says, Ya Rasulullah, are we going to be accountable by what we just say? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells him in the authentic narration, Wayhak. Woe to you, O Ma'ad. Don't you know that what makes people being dragged in the Day of Judgment on their faces is simply the consequences of what they said? But wait. The word comes from where? When do you utter the word? You think and then you say it? Usually, right? Yeah. Usually, a, a word is an expression of a thought. But supposedly, usually, most people think before they speak. I know you all do. But regardless, I mean, usually it's a thought, whether you bring it in your heart or not, that tells you the power of the thought. Detrimental. Where are the thoughts? Where's the intention? When you make intentions, where is the place of the intentions? On the tongue? Can you make an intention for salah on, by your tongue only and that's it? No. Where is the place for intentions? In the heart. So even if you don't utter the intention whatsoever, you just intend in your heart that you're going to pray, did you fulfill all the conditions for intentions? For the niyyah? Absolutely. Because the word is in the heart. It's the, the, the word that you actually speak is an expression of that word that's in the heart. But it starts in the heart. You express it. You feel love towards someone in your heart. Then you say, I love you. No, you feel hate towards someone in your heart. You say, I really hate you. You're expressing what's in your heart. You shouldn't really hate anybody. Hate is a strong word, but I'm just saying it. You know, we want to love everyone. Al-Qalb, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam puts it like if this story is authentic about Luqman, then puts it as such. 
that this heart, if it's good, then everything else is good. If it's bad, no matter how much you beautify the rest of the limbs and you, no matter how much cosmetics you put on the rest of the body, it makes no difference. You can't fool anyone because Allah does not look at your body but looks at your heart. Notice, we go back again to the very first thing that we started with. All right. So Al-Quran Karim gives us three kinds of hearts. And I'm not talking now from a connective tissue point of view. And I'm, talk, I'm talking actually from three kinds of hearts in general. A heart that is healthy. Salim. Salim. Salim in the Arabic. Anybody's name Salim here? People name Salim, right? I mean, you've seen. I'm sure you've seen people name Salim. Salim means healthy or illness-free. Let's say that's what Salim means. And then he said, that's why you say Mas Salama in Arabic. I mean, those of you who are Arabs know this. And that's why you say Salam, peace, right? Free, illness-free. Qalb Salim. Qalb means heart, Salim means illness free. Alright? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this heart. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa inna min shi'atihi la ibrahim idh ja rabbahu bi qalbin salim. From the Shia of Nuh, the meaning of the ayah, yani from the people who are loyal and supportive of Nuh. Wa inna min shi'atihi la ibrahim. Ibrahim is among those people. Salam, who was on the same line of Nuh. He's among the supporters of Nuh. He's uh, from the same tree of Nuh, per se. إِذْ جَاءَ رَبَّهُ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Ibrahim went to his Lord with a heart, قَلْب سَلِيم القَلْب السَّلِيم That's the first kind of heart. May Allah give us all that heart. Now this heart has characteristics. You have to be like on the line of Ibrahim. Huh? line of Tawheed, Ibrahim, I always say, the hero of Tawheed in the Quran al Karim, right? When you open up the Quran, and you see, you talk about Tawheed, and how he, from when he was young, he took the axe, remember when he took the axe, and he, he broke all the idols, and all that, he's trying to instigate in these people a thinking method, come on, let's just think, let's just not do things without thinking, so he broke the, he broke the idols, and then he put the axe with the big one, and he left him, he says, you know, go ask him. You, you believe in there you, th you believe in them as God right these idols so go ask them they should tell you and how can you believe in something that can't protect themselves but he's trying to tell them implicit ideas you you worship these idols and they're broken they, that means they couldn't even protect themselves how can they protect you All right, so he's going through and then ask them you worship something you can't you don't know you can't communicate they cannot help you cannot benefit you etc etc then he goes and talks to the people who used to used to worship the star. You all remember that, right? For Surah Al-Am and Najm. They look, because people always want to sort of worship something. They comprehend fully and manipulate the information about fully. If they can't submit, the human being's curiosity seems to sort of reject it. You know, no, no, it doesn't work. And that's why Islam means what? Submission. Right? It actually means two things. It means, comes from, Islam comes from Salam. Salam which means peace, inner peace, tranquility. And it means it's the Islam also, which means submission and surrender. Peace and submission. That's really the, the linguistic stem word of Islam. And they're not totally disconnected in a sense. They actually are connected in a sense that the only way you can achieve spiritual tranquility and comfort and, and inner calmness is if you are in total submission to the Creator. With submission, there is peace. With no submission, there is no peace. Salam is the Islam. وَلَا تَسْلَمُ قَدَمُ الْإِسْلَامِ إِلَّا عَلَى ظَهْرِ التَّسْلِيمِ وَالْإِسْلِسْلَامِ Very nice. 
In Islam, we came, obviously, the Quran Karim came to say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Qul huwa Allah ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid, wa lam yulad, wa lam yakun lahu kufwan ahad. And the ayah that the brother recited, Hal ta'lam lahu samiyya? And the translation says, Do you know anyone named like him? And I disagree with the translation, because it should be, Do you know anyone similar to him? A sami? Is, comes from a nadir or someone who's similar not just by name but by qualities do you know anyone similar to the attributes of Allah not just the name of Allah but the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing is like him as Allah says in Surah Shura هَلْ تَعْلَمْ لَهُ سَمِيَّا do you know anything similar to him The first heart is the Al-Qalb Salim, ill-free, disease-free heart. How is that heart disease-free? Because the heart's frequency, the frequency of that heart as far as what it is, it is with Allah, for the sake of Allah. It is not disconnected and detached from Allah. It is a Rabbani heart. It is a heart that in which is attached to the Creator and detached from the creation. Detached doesn't mean in a sense out of the creation and secluded. No, 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 no. It means you work with the creation but you are with the Creator. It means you love the Creator, you serve you are in the servitude of the creation, but you love the Creator. It means you work with the creation, but you don't rely on the creation. You rely on the creator. It means the perception, your perception in the creation mind is not important for you. What's important for you is how is your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the pleasure of the creation is not your objective, but pleasing the creator is your objective. Salim. So why, why does he's free? Because you see, when you when you rely on the creation, you can't please them. You can't please people. How, how many people can you please? Right? You can't please people. You are not. You all know that. Right? You know this. Another story. Should I tell you another story of Luqman? How many? How much time do I have? How much time do I have? So I don't spend all the time. Huh? Half an hour. Okay, so let me tell you the story of Luqman. So Allah Luqman alayhi salam, it's an old story, you probably all know it, but should I tell it to you or not? You sure? Okay. So Luqman alayhi salam, he wanted to teach his son a lesson, his young son. So he took him, Luqman was an old man, his son was a very young man, he took him, he says, all right, let's now go through a little trip to teach you lessons about life. It was three. Luqman, alayhi salam. Again, there's no sad in this, huh? So take, among these things, take or leave. It's in the Sira books and all these things. It makes no, it's not a part of the deen per se. It's just a thing that we learn from. It's sahih in its meaning anyway, irrespective of that. And you see it every day in life. There was Luqman, alayhi salam, the old man. There was the son of Luqman, there's the donkey. Because that was the means of commute back then, right? You commute with donkeys. So he said, you know what? I'm gonna ride the donkey, you pull the donkey, and let's go. So Luqman went on a donkey, and his young son is pulling the rope, and they're walking. As soon as they pull to the first village, people gather, they say, SubhanAllah, look at this old man. There's no mercy in his heart. He is riding comfortably the whole way, and he's letting this young, poor son, you know, just being dragged like this and without any mercy. Look at these parents nowadays. Look at how they don't really care about anything anymore. They only care about themselves. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah al al Dunya is over. Huh? This is the sign. Okay. See? So now let's switch. 
So now they switch. Now the son rides on a donkey, and Luqman pulls the mule. As soon as they go out and they pull into the next village, people gather, subhanallah, look at these, look at, look at the young generations, look. There's no respect for their parents anymore. He lets this, this, this little kid, he's letting his old, his old father walk, and he's sitting comfortably on the, on the donkey like this. La hawla wa la khalas. That's it. Forget the generation is done. It's over. He says, now let's both get on the donkey. So they both got on, on the donkey. Soon as they pull to the next village, people say, ah, no. they gather and say, Subhanallah, you people have no mercy in your heart. Man, this is an animal. It has a soul. It has a capacity. It's not for you to abuse. This is flat out animal abuse. Both of you are ready. Give him a break. Now, Allah did not create him for you to torture him. La hawla wa la you will have, there's hisab, there's iqab, you know. He says, look. He says, now let's both get off the donkey. Walk. So they both now get off the donkey and they're both pulling donkey and walking. As long as they pull to the, there's not, as long as they pull to the next village, the people gather, they start laughing at this. You people are crazy. Allah created these things so you can write them. <laughs> people are, what's wrong with you? You have no hikmah, there's no. You can't please people. So quit trying. Quit wasting your time. I'm not saying don't be nice to people. You've got to be nice to people. You've got to be the best you are to people because that's what Islam wants you to be. But you can't worry about pleasing everyone because you will not be able to please everyone. It doesn't happen. Worry about pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's that. And being good to people. That's important. Al-Qalb Salim, the one who has Qalb Salim, uh, he, this person is, Qalb is with Allah, attached. He sees things and he views things from that Rabbani binocular that he's got. Is that pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is that not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The heart reacts. Rabbani heart. Not only that, among the signs, so we know we can check our hearts. So let's, you know, let's try to make it more diagnostic here. So if we can, right? Differential diagnosis. Well, let's just at least give one signs and some some symptoms, right? Some symptomology here. What's the sign of a of a qalb salim? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Idha dhukir Allah wajilat. If Allah is mentioned, Allah says, Wajilat Qulubuhum, their hearts move. Now, I'm not talking about flutter here or arrhythmia, but your actual heart shape. You register. It's not just stopping at your ears. No, it's going to your heart. If Allah is mentioned, Wajilat وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِ of When the ayah of the Qur'an are recited, it somehow these ayahs, they don't just come to the, to the ears and they stop there. It, they go to the heart and it increases their iman. As if the ayahs are nur coming out and they go through your ear and they land in your heart, increasing your iman. al Quran Karim talks about signs of the Al-Qalb Al-Salim. And today you got to check your heart to see if you have Qalb Salim or not. When the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, <laughs> when the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned, how's your heart? Because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the ahadith that are authentic, hasan, etc., that uh, the miser is the one that hears my name and, in other words, my words now, quote unquote, his heart doesn't move by making salah and salam on me. It doesn't get to your heart to make 
to make you make salah and salam on him sallallahu alaihi wasallam it just comes to your to the ear and it drops from your ear it doesn't go inside so it doesn't elicit that love because if it goes to your heart it elicit it rekindles a love it stimulates within you if you truly love him sallallahu alaihi wasallam it should stimulate within you that maani these meanings of shawq and meanings of yearning and meanings of wanting to be with him sallallahu alaihi wasallam and meaning of wanting to see him in your dreams sallallahu alaihi wasallam and wanting meanings of wanting to be close to him and meanings of imbibing the noors from him and from his message and therefore and, and you meet a meanings of how how was he sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that he loved you before you could even ever love and he gave you before you could ever give and then your tongue of thankfulness automatically comes out by saying allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad but if it just comes to the tongue, to the ear, and just drops, it, the qalb is not salim. The heart is just detached, disconnected. And in spiritually speaking, the automaticity and the rhythmicity we talked about, medically speaking, does not exist spiritually. There's, there's got to be connection. It cannot be disconnected. There's a block. They call it heart block. There's first degree, second degree, and third degree. Third degree goodbye. Because everyone's on their own, there's nothing. Second degree, you have some missed beats. Huh? Right, you got first, second degree one, type one, second degree type two. What's the type two? So just one drop, now put them on the spot. Huh? One drop beats. And when you have prolonged PR interval, and then drop, and then drop beat, or absolutely just drop beats, your heart is not beating. Electricity is not going there, therefore it's not beating. That means there's a block, block here spiritually from your ear to your heart. You hear the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi but your heart is not beating, it's not reacting, it's dead. The problem with the heart disease is two things, chronic and progressive. You all know what chronic means, right? Progressive, and you know what progressive means. In other words, once it starts, it's just going down, unless you actually do something to stop it. Because Allah said, that's not my words, Allah said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, fi qulubihim marab fazadahumullahu maradah. Their hearts are diseased, and Allah increased their disease. Chronic and progressive. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٍ فَزَادَهُمْ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضٍ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ If the heart moves when you hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name and dhikr, and the heart moves when you hear the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Huh? Then, those are signs that your heart is salim. First heart. Second heart, dead heart. Khatam Allahu ala qulubihim. The heart uh, is sealed. So sealed, it's dead. There is nothing. Qalu qulubuna ghulf. Our hearts are sealed. They're dead. You can, you know, when Musa a.s. was telling them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what they should be, but he said, what they tell him? They said, look, Musa, talk all you want, our hearts are dead. It's not, you know, whatever you want, just say. Huh? Why? And then, the Quran talks about Nuh a.s. You know, he's telling people, so they don't want to even hear him. So they put their, their eye, their, their fingers and their, and their ears, so they don't hear anything. They want to suffocate their heart, so the heart dies. <laughs> or the dead heart, like Allah says, خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ That is, it's done. The, birth, the death certificate has already been sealed and stamped on their heart. It's done. Huh? 
those guys, no matter what you do, I mean, you can read the whole Quran in front of him. He can be doing the salah. In the salah, he's thinking, how is he going to disobey Allah right after that? No problem. No, no, in the salah. Allah Akbar. This guy is evil in front of me. This guy. Then tell you are the salah. Then how? In the siyam. There's just lying and cheating and deceiving all these things. Then. The problem with the dead heart is the shurur is lost. Shurur means what? Feeling. What's how so? Right, you all know also from medicine. If you have pain, a disease, an underlying condition, an underlying pathology with pain, or a painless pathology, which one would you like to have? Neither, right? That should be the answer. An underlying pathology with pain that is good versus a painless underlying pathology. If it's painless, there is serious, you're, in, you're in trouble. Pain is your system trying to tell you, look, there's something wrong here. Hello, pay attention. You there? Right. Come on. But what we do, we go down to the pharmacy and get painkillers. You're doing it the other way around. You're supposed to pay attention to the pain, not to the symptoms. Pain is actually good for you in a sense. It's trying to tell you there's something wrong with me. Pay attention to it. Treat it. And then I'll go away by myself. It's a Rabbani alarm. But anyway, you know, you know, and, you know if we, we think if one aspirin is good, that means 10 aspirins are good as well. So we just, you know. That's a lethal dose almost. Goodbye to liver. ASA, right? Anyway. The problem with the heart that is dead, there's no more feeling. Look at how Allah puts it in the Quran. So first we talked about the Qalb al salim وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِيَعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ إِذْ جَاءَ رَبَّهُ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Then we talked about the heart that's dead. خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ قَالُوا قُلُوبُنَا غُلْفِ What is the sign of قَلْبِ سَلِيمٍ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ When they're told, look how the Quran puts it. Because the Quran is real, it touches reality. If they're told, don't do fasad. Fasad means corruption. Don't do fasad on earth. قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ They said, what fasad are you talking about? What corruption? We are, we are good people. We are the positive contributors. Allah says, أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ Indeed, they are the people who cause corruption and evil. But what's the problem? وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ But they don't even feel that they do evil. Wow, wait a minute. Remember, you're supposed to, if you see the Hadith Sahih, you all know it, if you see something wrong, you correct it with your hand or with your tongue or the least with your heart. Remember that Hadith? Yeah? So what happens if your heart is dead? You can't correct it. There's no correction. There is no, there's no stimulation for correction. Now it goes worse than that to think that what you do, the wrong that you do is right. You have no more feeling or measurement to tell you that this is actually evil what you're doing. You enjoy the evil. Dead heart. People such as people who enjoy inflicting pain onto other people. Gossiping. Hating other people. Jealousy of other people. Look, nobody, nobody's telling you you should not ask Allah for the best. Please do. But don't be angry at Allah's decree. He gave others things He didn't give you. Don't be angry because He gave them. Don't be suggestive to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
What do you mean being suggestive? By saying, you know, I deserve it. Why do they have? Why, why should she have it? She should not. You know, she shouldn't have that. It's not fair. <laughs> I should have it. Don't be suggestive to the Creator, Subhanahu wa Taala. You don't know. هذا قلة أدب مع الله لك أدب من الله سبحانه وتعالى obviously to say the least but thank him for all he gave you then ask him for the best he gave you what you deserve and then some I was telling the brothers and the sisters the other day in Birmingham just a couple days ago there's two secrets to this relationship with Allah سبحانه وتعالى Love and gratitude. Love and gratitude. Mahabba and shukr. That's the key. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Amalu ala Dawood shukra. Allah says. O family of Dawood, if you want to be thankful, the Quran is saying, show me in deeds. Amalu. He didn't say just. قولوا هذا ولا شكرا. say الحمد لله. everybody says الحمد لله but they mean all kinds of things. they're not even present with الحمد لله. the heart is not present. the lips are just it's a lip service. الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله. and he's humming. you don't know what he's saying. and he's he's like he's supersonic. brother take it easy. there's no one after you. there's no one running. If there's no one running after, behind you with a baseball bat, y'all play baseball here? No? Right. Well, we play baseball in America. It's a, it's a big sport. But you all play the funny, uh, funny soccer thing where you hit the ball with your feet and, and head and all that stuff. Not <laughs> what football is supposed to be. There's no one running behind you with the base. Why are you rushing? What's the point? That you want to have quantity or quality? Which one? Quantity doesn't make a difference. Quality. Kam min fi'ate? Qalila. Qalila. Few. Ghalabat fi'aten kathiratan bi'ithnillah. They overcame. A lot of more, lot more people because of the will of Allah. وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ Few of my slaves are those who are thankful. See, the Quran always emphasizes on the quality, not the quantity. قَلِيل Little, few. Not the qu quantity makes no difference. Always the quality. كَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلًا وَقَلِيلٌ من عبادي الشكور وما أكثر الناس أكثر الناس ولو حرصت بمؤمنين not most people even if you were to try are believers or guided quantity quality or quantity it's a matter of quality don't rush take your time because that time is very important the problem with the dead heart is there's no more feeling anymore there's no there's no distinguishing right from wrong Right is wrong, wrong is right, everything is so mixed. Total loss and confusion. Like those who are lost in the fog. When you're lost in the fog, you don't know where you're going. Second heart, third heart. Al-Qalb al-Marid, the sick heart. So first we went Qalb Salim, Qalb Khutima Ali, or Qalb Dead. And then القلب المريض في قلوبهم مرض فيطمع الذي في قلبه مرض القلب مريض means diseased heart there is a disease this heart is not totally dead and it's not totally alive it's got sort of it's struggling it has the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it has some of the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it has some of the love of the Qur'an, but also it has the love of other things. It wants to, uh, it has love of itself. It's blind in a sense, you see? There's blindness. And the problem with blindness, 
or semi or short sightedness myopia right versus anyway so you have you have these hemonopsia or you have some halfway blind you don't see the full visual field in front of you right you see half of the visual field it could be problems lateral genicular body maybe right yeah. and then if it's the way to the lateral side after the splitting then it could be pi in the contralateral sky all of that. All right. so you only see something only you don't see you see just a like a slice of pizza instead of seeing the whole full see half truth is usually no truth because you're not seeing the full picture if you look at the moon and you think that the moon is is just a side the whole moon is that side that was that is well illuminated and lit well you've missed on half of the moon because the other half of the moon is absolutely dark if you see the crescent and you think this is the moon then you're also misguided that's a visual impairment problem you're not seeing the truth because the moon is not really a crescent what you're seeing out of it is just a crescent there's another big side of the moon that you don't see and the truth ought to tell you that the moon is not just a crescent. What you're seeing is just a crescent right now. The moon doesn't grow. It doesn't eat to grow and all that stuff. Okay. The problem with this heart, it sees halfway. So sometimes it's got moments where it is with Allah. And then sometimes it's got moments where it is with its hawa and desires and it's led by by whatever it is that the self-realization of the self. You see, here's the point. And it's not always, does not tell you that you should not worry about yourself and realize your dreams and ambitions. Absolutely, please do. Do everything possible to realize your dreams and ambitions in the right way. And it's not that Allah subhanahu wa not put within you desires so he can punish you for them. No. He put in you desires, human desires, and asked you to channel them the right way, not channel them the wrong way. If you channel them the right way, you're going to be rewarded. If you channel them the wrong way, then you'll be accountable. So the placing of the desires within the build of the human being, the human desires obviously, is not so that you're punished for them. Exactly the opposite, that if they're used in the right way, then you are rewarded for them. As well, many other authentic narrations of Sahaba al mentioned. But then if they're used the wrong way, then you'll be punished. As simple as that, as simple as knowledge you all are learning here in school, very nice. You learn knowledge, you learn you know, microbiology, you learn chemistry. You can either be a help to humanity and ease its sufferings through whatever you do, or you can be a pain onto humanity and develop some hydrogen bombs or nuclear bombs or whatever it is that you do and bring misery onto people. That tail that that you get that you got, how did you apply it? How did you channel it? Which way? The right way or the wrong way? To help or to hurt? If you're hurting people, you will be paying for it. See, there's something not that you cannot reach your potential. Please maximize your potential. I don't want to reach it. Maximize the potential you're in. Be the best you can be. Be all you can be. The sky is the beginning, not the limit. But remember that this life is not only about you. There are other things in this world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to establish this framework in which you know where you stand vis-a-vis -vis the creator and vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the creation. The diseased heart needs help. There are symptoms. First symptom is, first symptom for the diseased heart is lack of appetite. Lack of appetite. Right? What do you want to prescribe for? A perpetent? Lack of appetite. You've seen people who are sick and they don't want to eat. Right? You put the best food in front of them. Sorry. The best. The I mean, you know, things that you wanted to have the whole year and now it comes in front of you, but you can't. There's that lack of appetite 
or loss of appetite. That's what happened to the diseased heart. It, you bring the food for the soul, which is the dhikr of Allah, takes one, two, can't anymore. Read one ayah, loss of appetite. You know that the dhikr of Allah is nourishment to your soul, just like food is nourishment to your body. If you have a spiritual loss of appetite, you're going to suffer spiritually. So these people now with the diseased heart, there's a struggle in the heart. The first thing, the first symptom they experience is that loss of appetite. They can't, you tell them, can we go and make the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one hour? Can we go, can we read the Quran? Can we learn the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Can we do? I don't feel like it. Loss of appetite. Then it goes to debilitation, total almost frail. Right? You know how, how people, when people, there's, they, they can barely, you know, so the fard, they can barely do the fard. Again, you know, sunnah, no sunnah, this, no. Even the fard barely, you know, sometimes not, something that miss, they're weak, there's laugh. Because first there's loss of appetite, there's no food, you're going to be what? You're going to be what? I don't know, I can't, you know, miss this salah, miss that salah, miss, I don't know, and you're missing out on all kinds of things. All these things that actually give you the spiritual charge, that, that actually make you a healthy human being spiritually and physically missing out, that takes them, that's the second symptom. So first the loss of appetite, then it translates into actual debility and weakness. Third is very, very distant. There's almost a veil between them and good things. In other words, when Allah has mentioned they just want to stay away. I don't want to it's a combination of things. Maybe they feel they've been away, they've done so much, so much wrong and all this. So now they, they it, it just hurts them to think about it. So you know what? I'm just going to suppress the thought. I'm not going to go back to Allah. I'm not ready yet. I'll have some time. Whatever. I don't want to think about it. I'm just going to go. Right? So whenever, you know, let's talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's talk about the love of the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The love of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The love of the good people. The love of doing good. The love of positive contribution. The love of just being a great human being. Because a good Muslim is a good human being in the first place. Look, you know. But let, what does the heart like? You know, maybe gatherings that we will talk, we talk bad about this person, that person. You see that person running from these oasis of having good environment, running to the other oasis, uh, the, the other places. They're not, I don't want to call oasis, but the other gatherings. Rushing from one, so you invite them to come to the, to talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They almost find any excuse to run out of that one to go to the other one. And they would run and find, and replace it with, as if someone who is uh, addicted, right? You've seen people who are addicted, and they just do whatever they can to get out of that environment so they can go and get their fix right away. And their fix is shaitani fix. Because they escape the Rahmani and the Rabbani atmosphere, they have to go get shaitani fixed so they can stand and they can continue doing what they are doing. Otherwise they can't because the nur or the, the illumination that comes from the Rabbani gatherings are too much and they can't, they need to have shaitani power to stand against it in a sense at least within themselves. So they get that aid from shaitan and its gatherings. So I can't come in, where are you going? Are you going to do this and that? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's, all right. So they gather with the people who are, you know, that talking bad, doing bad things and all this, so they can imbibe some power from that, so they can continue, so they don't feel the pain of the conscious there. They want to kill it, suppress it totally. Remember, the heart is not totally dead yet, so it's given them pains, pain signals. Wake up, come on, let's go back. So they want to suppress it more, because now shaitan is the 
on the NMCC or the National Military Command Center, right? He's in control. You got him. He's doing that. He's moving the joysticks. That's another sign. وَإِذَا ذُكِرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ دُونِهِ إِذَا هُمْ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ Al-Quran says. If, they, if Allah has mentioned, they, their heart is tight and they, they just want to run away and immediately find any excuse, get and go to something else. But if any, anything other than Allah has mentioned, إِذَا هُمْ يَسْتَبْشِرُونَ Al-Quran says, oh, they're happy. And now they feel, you know, okay, now it's, notice how that happens. These are symptoms. Right. So we're talking about symptomology, so we can see again what, how, how the, how things happen. Let me just talk about four etiologies of what causes actually disease or what leads to cardiac disease, spiritual cardiac disease. That is. Because there are many, but I'm just going to talk about four, and then I want to I, I want to wrap it up, so y'all, I don't want to keep it for longer. Excess talk, excess food, excess sleep, ta'am, kalam, <coughs> unnecessary or mingling with the wrong people. Four things. Excess food. Excess sleep, excess talk, mingling with the wrong people. Those are four reasons that directly cause heart disease. First of all, excess food or excess sleep, let's start. Look, you'll sleep enough when you get to the next world. For right now, this is where you need to work. So those people who just want to spend their life sleeping, I got news for you. Hopefully, you realize that this is Darul Amal. The dunya is a place of Amal, not a place of Darul Naum, place of sleep. And that's why it's narrated, huh? And I don't have the sound to it. That Sayyidina Ali used to say, Al Yawm al Amal wa Ghadan al Hisab. And the sound escapes me now, so you know, keep it as a sound. Today is the, the actual work, and then tomorrow will account, Hisab will come, accountability will come. Today you don't sleep. Today you work. Don't waste your time and your life sleeping. There's so much you can do with your life. Don't sleep it off. Worse is that those people who take sleeping pills now so they can sleep. Unless you have insomnia. I'm not tired, I'm not telling you to be, be insomniacs, okay? But the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you see in his sunnah how he used to divide his day and also how he used to divide his night. Good sleep, right? Good sleep. While it's still dark. So you can, you know, get your CNS to be replenished and all that, the central nervous system, take it because it needs some time to go that. And then you go into your, you know, the cycles of sleep, the REM and the non-REM and all that. You see your dreams in stage two, REM and all that. You enjoy yourself and you get up. But you get up for Fajr. If you think by sleeping over Fajr, you're actually resting your body, you're not. Again, you're thinking with your own calculations. And the Rabbani way, that we were given is much better than your own calculation. You sleep, you wake up, you start your day with Alhamdulillah, you start your day with As-Salah, you start your day with Al-Quran Al-Kareem, and you have your whole day filled with Barakah, and filled with blessings, and filled, Allah Subh'ala gives that rizq and gives these things, it's all in the morning. Anyway, not only. The second one is excessive food, like we just did. We just ate pizza. I probably ate half a pizza by myself. Or like that. Terrible. Excessive food. Food is fuel. We agree? In other words, you all have cars? 
you don't fill, those of you who have cars, you don't fill it more than the tank can handle, right? Once it's full, if you keep just filling, it's going to spill. That's exactly what food is. If you keep putting, except that the tank within you can be extended, but you know what's going to happen. Food is fuel. Eat less. Practice eating less, systematically. And I'm not saying please be bulimic or anorexic, because those are problems and conditions that we don't want to get there. What I'm saying is, eat number one, eat quality, not quantity. We go and we talk about quality again versus quantity. Eat. Eat quality, not quantity. Good food, drink a lot of water. Fruits, vegetables. Hopefully you don't fry the vegetables. Because if you're frying them, you know what's happening to them. You're killing everything good in them. Raw vegetables. Raw, green, leafy vegetables, right? Green, leafy. The greener, the leafier, the better. That's right. Reduce your meat intake. Cause as less harm as possible to the environment around you. Because you're responsible for that as well. Excess food, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us, as you all know in the, in the hadith, بِحَسْبِ بِنِ آدَمَ لُقَيْمَاتِ أَنْ يُقِمْنَ صُلْبَةً It is enough for the children of Adam, few bites, many bites that sponsor or supports their body. If you have to fill it, then one-third for your food. Divide your stomach into three-thirds. One-third for food, one-third for, for water, 